Hi everyone, today Yunju and I will present our Coral Oral Work, 3D Neural Scene Representations for Visual Motor Control. This is a joint work with Winston, Pocket, and Antonio. Humans have a strong intuitive understanding of the 3D world. When we see the same action from different viewpoints, we know they depict the same underlying content. We can also predict how the system would evolve for various materials. The predictive ability allows us to solve complicated manipulation tasks involving fluids and containers of different shapes. These abilities of humans are adaptable in a wide range of environments and go far beyond the reach of the current robots. In this work, we aim to build systems that can model the dynamics of complicated 3D things that might involve both rigid objects and fluids. We aim at learning the dynamics model purely from visual observations to support downstream visual motor control tasks. So the question to ask is how to learn 3D-aware representation of the environment from images. A good 3D-aware representation should accurately depict the underlying content and allows us to perform control tasks from novel viewpoints. For example, given a goal image generated under a certain camera viewpoints, the robots need to achieve the same goal while its observed image are different from the goal image. In addition, we want the learned representation to generalize even if the goal viewpoint is outside the training distribution and study how well the robot can still accomplish the control task. There are many works investigating different forms of thin representations with different characteristics. One line of pre-work learns the dynamics model directly in the image pixel space. However, modeling dynamics in such a high dimensional space is challenging. And these methods typically generate blurry images when performing the long horizon future predictions. Another line of work focuses on key points. Such models perform well in terms of category level generalization but they are not sufficient to model objects with large variants, such as fluids and granular materials. Particles can model objects with high degrees of freedoms, but typically require strong supervision to map visual observations to particle states. Recent works like using the word model, dream to control learns dynamics in the latent space. However, the majority of these methods learns dynamics models using 2D convolutional neural network and the reconstruction loss. They have the same problem as predicting dynamics in the image space, that their learned representations lack equivalence to 3D transformations. Recent progress on neural radiance fields can reconstruct the realistic 2D images from the 3D scene representations by learning a simple feedforward neural network. Such models take the position information of each 3D point, x, y, z, and camera viewpoint, theta phi, as input and output the RGB color and the density sigma for the three points in the scene. They compute the rendering loss by comparing the difference between the generated RGB result and the ground truth RGB values and the given camera viewpoint. In our setup, we apply randomly generated action sequences to the simulator and generate 1,000 trajectories as an offline data set for each environment. Each trajectory contains 300 time steps. Each time step contains visual observations from 20 viewpoints. Here we show a video illustration of one trajectory and eight images from viewpoints inside the training distribution. In this paper, we propose to learn time environment action condition dynamic model for visual motor control. The core of which is the ability to learn 3D aware neural scene representations. Our model consists of three parts. In the left part, there is an encoder that maps the visual observations into a latency representation. Given an input image, we first pass it to an image encoder to generate the image feature. We then extract the features of images from the same time step by different camera viewpoints. To make the image features environment to camera viewpoints, we use the time contrast loss to pull features of images from the same time step to be closer. At the same time, we push the features of images from a different time step to be far away from the current image features. We then aggregate the image features from the same time step by different viewpoints using a state encoder to generate a state representation. In the middle part, we modify the NERF model to render the visual observation conditional on the scene representation and the query viewpoint. The input is the position of each 3D point, the camera wave direction, and the state representation. 
The output is the color and density of that point. We use the same L2 loss used in the original nerve paper to reconstruct the images. In the red part, there's a dynamics model that predicts the evolution of the latent representation conditioned on the input action. Given a state of representation and an action, we predict the representation of the next state using a learned dynamic model. We compute the L2 loss between the predicted state of representation and the ground truth state of representation. The gradient from the loss is then backpropagated to the dynamics model to update its parameters. During testing, we first fit the input image at time t to the encoder to generate the scene representation as t. The dynamics model then takes as t and the corresponding action sequences at the input to iteratively predict the future. Then the decoder synthesizes the visual observation conditioned on the predicted state of representation and an input viewpoint. The overall system will allow us to synthesize images from novel viewpoints and predict the future states. Next, Yunzhu will show the experimental results and generalization to extrapolation viewpoints. Hi, I'm Yunzhu, and here I'm showing the experimental results on action condition, future prediction, and novel view synthesis. The left is the ground truth, and the right is our model's prediction over 200 time steps. The inputs to our model are the initial visual observations and the subsequent action sequence. The model predicts the future and renders the image from a query viewpoint. Our model makes reasonable predictions, but deviates from the ground truth when going too far into the future. Still, the model can be useful for planning and control when used in a closed loop. The learned model also works in cases where we shake a box of fluids together with a nice cube floating on the surface. Our prediction is a bit blurrier than the ground truth, and you can also observe discrepancies between the two videos. Still, our model captures a wave of the fluids and matches our intuition and can be useful in downstream tasks. Here's another example where three cubes fall down and collide with each other. Now, given the learned dynamics model, how well can it facilitate downstream control tasks, especially control from novel viewpoints? Here, the task is to match the fluid shape in 3D depicted in the goal image at the end of the control episode. Here's the control process, where the robot only takes a visual observation from one camera with a viewpoint vastly different from the goal. Here is a control result from the goal viewpoint. We extract the fluid particles from the underlying simulator and show the overlay between the resulting configuration and the goal. Our model matches the target configuration with a decent accuracy. Being able to control from novel viewpoints is great, but what about viewpoints that are outside the training distribution? It requires us to perform extrapolation generalization. Let us go back to the autoencoding process and see what will happen when we encounter out of distribution images. The image will go through the encoder and give us an amortized estimation of the state, ST. When decoded directly from the amortized estimation, the results are not ideal and depict different 3D contents from the ground truth. To update ST and make it better at describing the underlying 3D contents, we employed auto-decoding test time optimization technique. Specifically, we compare the difference between the input image IT and the reconstructed image, and backpropagate the gradients of their differences with respect to the thin representation ST to iteratively update it. After the auto-decoding test time optimization, the resulting ST is much better at describing the underlying contents as evidence from the decoded image. Here are some more results from our model that after auto-decoding test time optimization are variated as AD. The rendered images are closer to the input images captured from out-of-distribution viewpoints. We compare our method with an alternative that uses a CNN decoder, and it produces much worse results. The key to our success is the use of neural implicit representations and the combination with a differentiable volumetric renderer. It injects the desired inductive bias that allows the model to be equivalent to 3D transformations. Given the updated scene representation for the goal image, we can use the learned dynamics model for model predictive control. Here is the control process. And here's the control results from the goal viewpoints and overlay between the results and the goal configuration in 3D show in the fluid particle space. 
We compare our method with a 2D baseline trained using regular autoencoder and time contrastive loss. Our model is more precise at capturing the underlying 3D contents and generalizing to viewpoints outside the training distribution, where the 2D baseline shows a clear discrepancy with the target configuration. Here is another side-by-side -side comparison with the 2D baseline on shaking a box of fluids with a floating cube. Our model is more precise at locating the container's position when operating from a novel viewpoint. To show the necessity of modeling the fluid dynamics in our task, we include an additional baseline that uses PID control to reach the robot state in the target image without worrying about the fluids. Note that this baseline uses additional information, including the ground truth state of the robots in both the current and the target image. The goal here is to leave a small amount of fluids in the container at the end of the control episode. Naively matching the container's position and orientation using PID does not work. In contrast, our model first learns to pour a certain amount of fluid out and then tilts the container back to match the target configuration. We have also conducted experiments to validate our method on real-world data. We use 4D415 RGBD cameras to record a human subject pouring water from one cup to another. The cameras are calibrated and synchronized with a frequency of 15 Hertz. To obtain the action, we attached an apple tag on the cup to obtain its six dog pose at each time step. Our model can learn from the data and make open loop future predictions based on the learned representations. When compared with the ground truth, our model knows when the fluid pours out and fills the bottom container. And when the top container becomes empty, In summary, we propose to learn 3D of real representations from visual observations that can perform long-term future prediction and novel view synthesis, and facilitate closed-loop feedback control from novel viewpoints that are even outside the training distribution. We hope this work can inspire future studies of more generalizable visual motor control systems for complicated dynamic environments. Thank you for listening.